going on, everybody? We got some smooth vibes today. That's it. We're gonna play what you really want to play. We're gonna roll with it. Give it a few minutes, we're gonna get started. Use in the chat right now. You got to hear this. All right, we had to play that for a few. And, uh, you know, I had to get that out of the way. Because y'all know I got to play my music before <laughs> we get started. I'm going to tell you right now. But thanks for everyone that's joining this call today. Y'all know me, Broadest Mama, founder and managing member of Level Up in Tech. But today we're going to talk about advancing women in tech. We're going to have a roundtable discussion. And I have an esteemed panel of women who are thriving in the tech industry, as you can see on this screen right now. Right? So... Our discussion is really focused on really exploring the ways to increase gender diversity, equity, and inclusion in the tech sector. And then we'll discuss challenges women face entering and advancing their technical field in, into the technical fields and identifying strategies to support and empower the women in tech. All right, so I'm I'm just honored to facilitate the discussion. And I hope y'all gonna get the value that y'all need, especially the women out here that's really looking to gain insight on how they can navigate this industry and, and get the bag, be boss, right? Own your own creativity and just level up. That's really what we looking to do today, all right? So number one, um, I wanna just let y'all meet the panelists for today. So if I could just get everyone to introduce themselves briefly, tell us who you are, what you do, and how long you've been in the tech industry. And to you, what does it mean to be a woman in tech? So I'm gonna start with you, Jen. <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. I'm Jen Bergstrom. I'm Chief Technology Officer for Mission Solutions Sector, which is part of the Parsons family of uh, work. And I've been in the industry for about 20 years. I actually started out in software engineering and then moved into cloud and then transitioned over into where I am today, which is more of the tech leadership and the strategic planning and thought uh, side of the house. And I'm really excited to be here. Um, what it means to be a woman in tech for me it's getting used to standing out just because of the fact that i'm a woman here there have been you know several times in my career where i was the only woman in the room and in a way that's really freeing to be able to uh, operate and function and you know still prove my chops and do my job well and successfully even when i'm underrepresented and one of very few in the room Oh, that's that's awesome. Thank you for that. And, and those words right there is empowering to people. If y'all listening, put the JBs in the chat right now if you're listening. I want to see the JBs in the chat because that was dope. So next, we're going to go to Janita. Well, my name is Janita Green Williamson. Um, I am a, I was a currently, or was previously, excuse me, a traveling uh, pharmacy technician. I also work remote as a data entry specialist in the pharmaceutical world. Um, and now I'm currently an infrastructure, an infrastructure automation engineer, um, and I'm new to the role. Um, I just started almost a month now, and I'm excited about it. Um, for me, it's important for um, for women to work in this industry, especially as um, as a black woman, because role models. It's it's essential when it comes to the next generation, um, and just like how Jen said, as far as just like having like, you know, that that vibe that you have, like with someone um, who is of the same gender, you guys kind of feed off of each other. Um, and it gives di different perspectives and um, gender balance within the room. Like no one wants just a guy's perspective upon things like guys are great, but it's like sometimes, you know, you need a softer, a softer opinion about things. Or sometimes you need like a more hardcore, you need a woman that's just like, no, we need to just get this done. And that's just how it's going to be. 
it's important for us to be, you know, and have to have a seat at the table. We can't have the world would be nothing without the Beyonces of the world. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's super dope. I, I definitely agree. Empowerment is the word, right? Empowering each other and, and taking each other to the next level. All right. So we got Jare. What's going on? Thanks for saying my name right. <laughs> you said what? I said thanks for saying my name right. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm not the one to mess it up. <laughs> um, I am Jaree um, Williamson. I am Janita's sister. I previously was a cardiovascular specialist for 10 years traveling around the country. Um, and, you know, honestly, I was just tired of the long shifts. And so I decided to transition into tech. And now for the past three months, I've been working at a fintech company um, doing DevSecOps and monitoring. And honestly, I love it. Like, I love the work-life balance, the working from home. The you know getting coffee, you know in between shifts like I I love Come it all. To my house for lunch. <laughs> yeah, going to my sister's house for lunch. <laughs> um, but being a woman in tech to me, honestly, is all about you know community inclusion and perspective. I think that even as a black woman, especially you know being able to have that perspective and you know be that voice for other women of color in the tech field because it's it's still you know ever rising, right? So I definitely want to be a role model to the girls and that's trying to work in STEM and everything. So I'm happy to be here. We're happy to have all of y'all. So you look, put the JWs in the chat right now for the Williamson sisters. Listen, this is like, this is like the Williams sisters and Timmy, they can take over. I keep saying that, right? They're going to have, gonna have Pepsi around. Listen, this could be the first endorsement. All right. And tech, we got Pepsi, all like Apple. this. There's an Apple. We're gonna sign on the deal. That's what we're gonna do, right? So, hey, listen. So I wanna ask a, a a very good question. Um, and I'm gonna start with Jen. Uh, but for um JJ, right? I want y'all to just think about even your path coming into the industry. So when when I ask the question, you're gonna understand what I'm talking about. So so, Jen, tell us, how have you navigated uh, the tech industry as a woman? Yeah, that's a fun question. Um, you know, for me, the journey started right out of high school when I went into college, and I went into electrical engineering for my undergraduate degree. And when I started the program, it's a five-year program, and when I started it, we were roughly 50% female entering the program. By the time I graduated, we were maybe 2% of the graduating class which was you know, really interesting to see happen, even just at the college level for women who already thought they wanted to be in tech. And so many of them changed their mind as they were going through. After I got done with undergrad, I went straight into software and started working in software. And you know, as I mentioned before, we're under, underrepresented in, in software, in tech in general. And you know, I got used to pretty quickly being the only woman in the room. And what that meant to help for navigating was I had to find allies. I had to find you know, other, other engineers who saw the value that I added to the program, not just from my skill set, the hard skills, but also from the soft skills side and from the diverse personality and perspective that I brought to the picture. And building up those allies and developing professional relationships with the other engineers around me helped me find my path forward. There's a lot of different paths you can take in tech. Uh, you know, if you look at my path over the last seven years, basically since I started with Parsons, I've done a variety of different roles and, and responsibilities. It isn't a ladder, it's a lattice, and you move around a lot. And having the flexibility and willingness to do that and the ability to make connections to the other individuals and people that are in the programs and in the in the company is really, really powerful for being able to go where you want to in tech. Uh, the biggest thing that's benefited me, aside from being able to make relationships, is having a healthy curiosity. You know, lifetime learning tech is one of those industries that moves super fast and you have to be interested in learning. And that curiosity and, you know, interest in stepping out and trying out new areas is really what has shaped my career and led me down the path I've taken. So basically, what y'all got to understand, too, before I get to Jerry and uh, Janita is, and I'm just going to say this from my perspective, right? Um, obviously, I'm not a woman, but, you know, I'm just, I want to make sure y'all understand this. When women walk into the room, y'all really own it, right? And some of you may feel like if you're walking into a room full of men, 
that, you know, no one's going to value your opinion. But all you have to do is open your mouth and show um, the intelligence that you have. And for those of you who really value your opinion, they're going to be the ones that help you get, you know, to where you need to go in the first place. Those who don't, we don't care, right? They're not going to listen anyway. So the value is not for them. The value is for the ones that uh, you can bring asset, the, your asset to the organization that's going to listen because you can do a lot of things that women think about a lot of things that men don't think about. We're, we're pretty much like one track and then, you know, Y'all could come in and be like, have you thought about this and thought about that? You're like, um, no, nah, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't think about that at all. <laughs> if you bring a sense of organization, calmness, and just uh, for lack of a better word, bossiness. But what I mean by bossiness is really being a leader, right? Um, being a boss is me sharing your vision and then orchestrating everybody around you to make, to make that happen. And I think every time y'all walk in the room, you can own the room if you really want to. Just all you have to do is open your mouth and talk, network, and showcase uh, your intelligence and share your value. All right. So uh, to Janita, how have you navigated the tech industry as a woman? Well, for me, I mean, I started Googling how to get into it. And when I tell you that was probably one of the worst things that I could have done, because like Jen had mentioned before, like there's so many entry points where you can get into the industry and it's almost like you what you're good at you know i i like troubleshooting and i love automation so i knew and i like to develop things so i knew that devops would work out for me i did the program the number one thing that i that i had to teach myself was to be selfish with my goals and communicate that to my partner to make sure that there was room um, within our household for support. Um, by being selfish with my, in, you know, and being intentional with that, um, it was able, I was, you know, I was able to provide myself that laser focus that I needed to actually complete the program. And then also to network, like that's probably one of the biggest things. And it's actually what got me my um, position um, as an infrastructure um, engineer is finding your, your, your people. I don't know anybody that was doing exactly what I was doing. So I would look on Instagram, I would go on LinkedIn, and I would I would follow those girls, I would follow those women that's actually doing something similar to what I was doing. And every single day, I would show up as if I already had the job just to get my mind like mentally there. Like, you know, I'm like, Lord, like I'm ready to accept this blessing. Like, let me wake up with my coffee. Let me start coding. Let me start practicing, talking like a techie. And then eventually that that dream, it becomes a reality. So, mm -hmm. I mean, my main advice to people who are trying to break into the industry is be intentional, find that goal, be selfish with it. It'll feel good at the end. You can share it with everybody at the end and then build your network and really know like there's more people out there who's willing to support you than to see you fail. The people that want to see you fail or that don't really care what you're doing, they just they just talk a little bit louder. You know what I mean? <laughs> and the people that want to see you succeed, that's the stuff that really like that hits your heart and like your soul. And that's all that matters. Absolutely, because it's going to be a lot of noise in this industry. And you hit it on the head when you say people who don't care or try to get you off your goals or off track is going to talk a little bit louder, right? Because that's what the enemy does, right? Kind of distracts you um, from the true goal that um, God says you can have, right? So you have to get it in here and here before you can have it in here. Yeah. So just like Janita said, you got to be intentional. You got to act as if. You got to wake up every morning, even if you don't feel like you're an engineer today, you got to wake up in the morning and say that you're an engineer every day, right? And you got to say that you're successful. You're blessed. Everything you touch will, will be successful. Your cup's going to run it over where you could be able to bless other people. You got to say all those things to yourself in order for you to move ahead as if. And if you don't, then the noise or people talking loud is going to get to you and ultimately can make you quit if you don't be selfish with your goals. All right. So I just want to piggyback. I'm sorry, y'all. You know, I need was preaching. You know, I felt the word. So, um, Jerry, how have you navigated the tech industry as a woman? 
Um, as a woman, I started off in a male dominated role, you know, doing healthcare and being inside of the OR and doing those procedures. I was a part of the critical care team. So, you know, I'm coming in when you have a heart attack, when you have a stroke. And so I'm used to being in that environment. And I found out the different ways how to make myself be heard and how to put myself inside of uncomfortable positions, because if I'm comfortable, I'm bored. <laughs> so I, as soon as I learned all of that, you know, with healthcare, I said, okay, well, what do I want my life to look like in 10 years? Because honestly, like, I love what I do, but this isn't a sustainable lifestyle for me, you know? And I legit had to come, have a coming to Jesus model with myself and just say, you know what? I don't want to work this hard. I don't want to, or this type of, you know, work, you know, where I'm standing up all day and taking call, getting two hours of sleep, like that's longevity wise, it's just not sustainable. Um, and so then I was networking with my friend Tegan, who I've been friends with since I was like 16. <laughs> and she was telling me about Level Up in Tech and told me, you know, like their success stories. And I did some research myself. And honestly, like if it wasn't for me just having a different type of friend, versus like my everyday, you know, you have like your friends that you hang out with and like your friends that you've been friends with for a while, but it's, you have to make friends that can get you inside of those rooms and that can help you, you know, for the long run. And so I say that to say, you know, don't sleep on networking, don't sleep on LinkedIn. Like you definitely have to put yourself out there and put yourself in those uncomfortable situations and conversations in order for you to have longevity. Um, and so honestly, like I just planned my goals and then I made it personal and I did nothing but be in my little cave <laughs> for six months and, you know, took my laptop everywhere with me because I wanted it so bad. Like I wanted to change so bad and I knew that I could do it. Um, especially because, you know, I, I preach those aspirations to myself all the time. Like you have to have that confidence within yourself. It's not cocky to say I can do anything. Like it's, it's manifesting, it's showing yourself like, you know what, if nobody else is gonna believe in me, I'm gonna believe in me. And that's all I need. Like all I need is my opinion and God's opinion. Um, and so, yeah, just from that, you know, I, I used to full that cold actually before this, um, but honestly, I just felt like it wasn't something that I truly loved. And then I saw the DevOps opportunities and you know, it's, it has the coding, but then it's also operations. And there's so many paths you can take with DevOps. So I'm happy I made the change. <laughs> we are too. We are too. So thank you all for that because that's the stories are empowering. And one thing that I see that was the common thread of all of your stories were you had to have enough confidence to get around the right people. You had to network, right? You had to talk and really believe in yourself and push yourself to be uncomfortable because sometimes even having a conversation with people that you may look up to or people that's doing what you want to do can be uncomfortable because you know sometimes we don't want to say the wrong thing right we don't want to look like we don't know nothing or anything we don't want to you know whatever the case may be but you got to find that strength within and just have the conversation and then it becomes regular so just like jury said you know when you start doing things and you start pushing yourself and saying, hey, this is what I want to do, when you get to that point, it becomes regular to you, right? So now the thing that used to scare you doesn't scare you anymore. Now you got new levels that's going to scare you. So just a reminder too, every level that you go to and grow to, it's going to be another level that you're going to be scared to get to as well. And it, you know that imposter syndrome and everything never goes away but you just got to do it scared anyway, all right? So put the LUs in the chat if this is value right now, because I, I swear to God, I wish I had a Funk Master Flex bomb. I dropped this right now. <laughs> 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 yes, I want to see the LUs. <laughs> we got you. Yeah, thank y'all. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to come right back around to you, Jen. So a lot of a lot of women, uh, they may be discouraged to go for it tech roles because of the hard skills that many roles require, right? So what kind of transferable skills are just as viable to nurture to get into tech roles? 
Yeah. Well, so we've already touched on one of them that's really a superpower, and that's the networking. That's applicable whether you're looking for a job or whether you're already in a job doing the work. Being able to make those connections, those real connections with the people around you and understand what their needs are and what you, know, what you can do to help them out and to add value for them, that's huge. Uh, the other really big skill um, that I see and that I use every single day is just the ability to speak in a way that your audience understands. So, you know, if you're talking tech with a tech person, an engineer, you need to be able to get down into their level and talk in their language, right? They need to, they need to be hearing the words they're used to hearing. And the same thing applies if you're talking to a customer or if you're talking to your manager or if you're talking to your manager's manager's manager, you know, all the way up the chain. Each one of those different levels and different responsibilities has a different language that they're used to hearing things in. And being able to make that translation and, and talk the talk at the level that it needs to be at so that they can understand is huge. And then, you know, the other big superpower that I really see in the very transferable skill is that curiosity, that drive and desire to learn and to find things that you find fascinating about whatever your work is that you're doing is incredibly transferable and incredibly powerful. You know, the hard skills, I mean, you mentioned at the start of this broadcast brought us that hard skills can be learned. You know, there's, there's no hard skill out there that you can't learn if you don't apply yourself and put the effort and work in to, to learn. But the soft skills, which is a misnomer, um, but the soft skills are, you know, you can learn those too, but a lot of people never bother to because they don't really see the value in them. So, you know, if you pick up on those soft skills and you learn those and you really push those in, that makes you different from everybody else more than just being a woman in tech it differentiates you and gives you capabilities that a lot of the other engineers around you never develop. Wow. That's that, that hit the, the nail on the head because once again, if y'all paying attention, the common thread that these ladies are talking about is talk, have conversation and learn who your audience is, who is the avatar that you're speaking to at the moment. Right? So, like if it's a non-technical person, you got to break it down in a non-technical way. And really in this industry, that's going to be the thing that shoots you to the next level because a lot of people don't want to have conversations. Actually, a lot of people don't want to deal with people in this industry. And if you can learn how to deal with people, whether you're internal or external customer, it's going to push you to the next level. All right. Okay. So Janita, what transferable skills are just as valuable just as valuable to nurture to get into tech roles that you think of? Well, I'm a I'm gonna reach out into detail when it comes to healthcare workers, because that is probably the number one question that I get in my DMs all the time. And I'm answering y'all questions. All, my, all y'all DMs, I see all. I just started a new job, give me some time. But <laughs> three main ones um, from transitioning from a healthcare worker to tech. You don't think that you have them, but you do. Um, the first one is problem solving. Um, if you just so happen to, how it relates is when you have an issue in the healthcare field, you know exactly how to be quick and you know how to be efficient. Same exact thing when it comes to troubleshooting in tech. Um, as far as time management in healthcare, you ain't got no time. <laughs> you have to know on the spot how to fix the situation and what tools are actually needed to actually provide to that patient, you know, to provide good patient care. Tech field, same exact thing. You got a deadline, you got the resources to do it, AKA, if you don't got it, Google it. It's, it's, it's there for you. It's technology, use your resources. As stupid as that might sound, a lot of people think like, well, I need to have a book to provide me the resources. No, use what you have in front of you. Get on your phone and say, hey, how do I solve this? There are people there who on the Internet who already had that same issue. And your question, technically, it probably is already answered on the Internet already. Um, good communication skills. Um, you have to have when you're working in the healthcare field. If not, things get lost in translation. Same exact thing in tech. You got to know how to work in a team um, because you're just a small like entity within a program or within whatever project that you're working on. Um, the only difference is that in the healthcare field, if you just so happen to mess up, it's almost like you take that 
that burden home with you because you're you're providing care for someone's family member in the healthcare field you might just be losing somebody billions of dollars but <laughs> you know at least you know you can fix it you have your team there to to you know bring you back to life and then lastly um attention to detail you know just believe in yourself and just know what you have in front of you write out a plan to try to execute it and then i mean you have more skills that you can transfer on to whatever job that you have into the tech field literally write them out in a list a compare you know a compare and contrast list or whatever a pros and cons whatever type of list that you need to make sure that you understand that you probably already have the people skills and the all the technical skills and whatnot that i had mentioned before but yeah um I don't know what else I can I can add to that part. <laughs> you did great. I mean, because problem solving, a lot of people are doing it right now. Whether, listen, whether you bagging groceries, yep, or whether you working in a bank, you come across problems that you have to think quickly to learn how to solve to give good customer service and customer value, right? Mm -hmm. So you bring that same mindset to tech, right? Tech, the tech can be learned it is about changing the mindset to learn how to solve problems the engineering way and bringing what you already know over and seeing what aligns with the the, the mission and values of this industry anyway right so listen i i, I really hope y'all taking our notes because the ladies is dropping the gym put the gyms in the chat put the if you got your phone out right now <laughs> If you're your back, well, put the gyms in the chat. I want to see the gyms right now. Stop playing with me, all right? So, Jareen, while we're here, right, mm -hmm. transferable skills are just as valuable to nurture and get in the tech roles that you think of. Um, the number one skill that helps me is, honestly, critical thinking. Um, and I'm just pinging it for my sister for a moment just because we have similar backgrounds, you know, working in healthcare, you have to be able to critical think, you have to be quick on your feet, you got to be adaptable, which are, you know, also both hard um, skills that you can be transfer transferable to tech. But, you know, those skills that you, that come naturally to you, don't take them lightly because that's what's going to set you apart from someone else. That's what's going to make you say, that's what's going to make the employer say, hey, you know what, this person has that skill that we actually need for our team. Let's hire this person. Um, are you analytical? Do you like making lists like me? That's going to help you in tech because that's going to show that you're organized. That shows that you know how to um, work on a time, um, time schedule. All those things are important. Nothing is, you know, nothing is not important when it comes down to your skills. And then communication. Um, with healthcare, you know, we learn to talk in layman's terms, which is just honestly making it so that way the person who doesn't speak healthcare <laughs> or doesn't speak medicine can understand you. Um, and so you do the same thing with tech, especially in the DevOps field. You know, as a DevOps engineer, we have the ability to be able to talk to the engineer because we do coding and, you know, learn the back end of things, but then we can also talk to the client as well. So all those things will set you apart and make you great. Hey Amen. Uh, definitely mm -hmm. agree. And once again, take notes, y'all, because this is not, I mean, if you're, if you're listening as a man too, this is not just for women, right? This is the idea is to help you be successful in tech, whether it's through whatever journey you're going through, through your own terms, through a program, you work with mentors, whatever. These things the ladies are spitting today. It's hot dial on fire. Right? <laughs> it's been hot dial on fire tonight. <laughs> you need to jot it down because this is something that's going to help you take, take yourself to the next level. I promise you, right? And I ain't see no gems in the chat. I need to see the jewels because they dropping the jewels right now, okay? So <laughs> <laughs> so next question. To, back to you, Jim, because we're going in the circle right now. So how can we best address the shared goal of closing the gender and pay gap amongst women in tech roles? Yeah. So, you know, this is a hard question, right? This is, it's a, it's a hard problem to solve because if you look at, you know, universities enrollments, uh, more women than men are enrolled in undergraduate programs in universities right now, but in the tech industry, in particular in the computer science and uh, 
cloud and data analytics domain spaces, women are still drastically underrated, underrepresented and you know, minorities are drastically underrepresented in enrollments in those programs. The problem starts before we get to university level. It, it starts before we ever get into actually preparing to come out and work in the industry. It really starts down at the elementary school level. Uh, research has shown over and over again that somewhere between third and sixth grade, women and minorities tend to fall back out of interest in the STEM fields. You know, if you if you measure participation in about third grade, it's roughly 50-50 guys and girls that are interested in STEM and tech. But by the time you get up to sixth grade, it's dropped down to less than a quarter of girls are expressing interest in going into those fields. And, you know, you're starting to hear the messaging from them that math is hard or science is hard or, you know, they they don't have the right kind of brain to do that kind of work. So, you know, when I'm looking at long term, how do we close the gender and diversity gap in our tech roles? We have to be starting down at the elementary school level and reaching out to them and letting them see people like all of us on this call today that are in the tech industry that maybe aren't the people you're used to seeing represented in the tech industry. And, you know, getting visible, getting out there, letting them see that there are people out there doing the work, loving it, succeeding at it and making it better for everybody there is hugely powerful. Once you get in the industry, one of the biggest things that I can see that helps, especially with the pay gap side of things, is transparency. Mm. Be willing to talk about your salary. Be willing to talk about what your expectations are for roles. Be willing to push when, you know, when you're applying for a new role that maybe is a stretch for you. Push that and, you know, say, hey, hire me on the potential. Don't necessarily just hire me on proof of my performance. There's a lot of evidence out there that shows that men tend to be hired into roles for their potential at fulfilling those roles, whereas women in the tech industry especially still tend to be hired into roles based on proof of performance. So what does that mean? It means that women are oftentimes expected to perform in the job role before they get the recognition of the job role. And that's, you know, that's a limiting factor. But part of the reason that happens is because we as women tend to let it happen yeah. and, you know, so that's one of the things that we can do is speak up, be an ally for people, be an ally for yourself and push for equal hiring practices for hiring for potential across the board so that, you know, we're not being shut out of being able to be put into roles just because we're not quite there yet. Um, that, you, you really dropping that because at the, this is a saying where for women, you once again, it goes back to the point I was talking about where all you have to do is open your mouth and, and showcase that intelligence and showcase your value and ask or not even ask. Right. Say, this is what I want. Right. And you can position it in a way where I always tell people, don't even say, hey, can I get this? Say, would you be opposed to giving me this? Because this is what I bring to the table. And you're putting them in a position to say, Yes, I oppose, right? And if they say that, yes, I oppose, then they gotta tell you why, right? They gotta really tell you the honest truth, why they oppose of giving you that, that certain type of salary. But in this industry and in any other industry, I hope y'all hear when I say this, you don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate to, right? So what I mean by that is, if you want something, go get it. And if that company is not willing to give, give it to you, then you treat it like a relationship. If you're on a date and you're looking for a partner and that partner is not talking the way you want them to talk about where your life is, where you're trying to go with your life, will you still go on a second date with them? Will you still give them another try to win you over with the underpaid uh, BS that are coming out of their mouth? No. So why would you do that with a job, right? So one of my good friends, Kanika Tover, always say, you know, you don't marry the job, you date the job. And if the job on the date is not talking right, you go to the next company that's going to value you just as much and even more, right? So, um, but to Janita, right? How can we address the shared goal of closing the gender and pay gap? What are your thoughts? Well, the main thing that I noticed, well, for one, I grew up 
mainly around the boys. I, I am a, a prissy little tomboy. I'll tell you that. Jerry was in the kitchen. I was outside with our dad fixing breaks. I came home. <laughs> I'm not going outside. Right? <laughs> I can't boil an egg, but I can try to fix your break, honey. But the, the number one thing like that I noticed about my male counterparts or even just like my male friends, they are not afraid to blurt out exactly how they feel, what they want, and they'll just shoot their shot no matter no matter what. Us as women, I feel like we're we're just we think too much into the details when it, it comes for us to try something new. Um, speak up more literally speak up more and speak to the right people show your face in those rooms go to those um the conferences network like i was saying earlier and eventually people if, if all women were to do this people will start to notice like okay she does have what it takes she can be just as good as a guy um doing x y and z you know, she can, she can balance having a baby and balance having a career. And she is just this, you know, she's just this G of a woman, you know. And to me, that's probably the biggest thing is, for one, a guy can't try to guilt trip a woman for wanting to do something in a male dominated field. I've seen some men try to make a woman feel down about herself because she's trying to do something that is known, uh, you know, that's a guy's role. L uplift the, the women, you know, do your part as a, as a man and really just see like, okay, well, if she wants to do something, let me show her from my perspective how I would do it. And then from there, you know, the, the world, the world is our oyster. Like the possibilities will be endless. Um, as far as just how the pay goes, and then also as far as just like getting us in the door, because everybody deserves it. I totally agree too, because I think that starts at home as well with the exposure, right? So let's go back with the point where Jim was talking about where even early on before college in elementary, right? Where 50-50 in first grade had an equal interest in STEM. I think really depending on the culture, whether you know minority or the black women, it, it, it goes to, what we've been exposed to as a child too, right? You know, in, in the culture or content or whatever the case, a lot of us don't see uh, successful tech industry folks, right? What we, especially for, let's super, be super transparent, especially for black culture. We see successful rappers, successful basketball, football players, but we don't see enough doctors. We don't see enough people in tech. That's not what we're exposed to, right? So it's all about exposure and it starts at home. So for those of you with kids, you got to start exposing your kids to what they can do in tech because tech is getting bigger and bigger and more companies are leaning on more specifically cloud computing, right? And my son would have never known about tech if I didn't tell him about it because they don't teach it at school. I mean, they do some technology, but they don't implement, hey, this is what you can be when you get out of school. This is an actual viable field you could go into and make more money perhaps than some of these ball players are out here. Because believe it or not, these ball players make 27 cents on a dollar. $10 million contract is $2.7 million in some cases for these ball players, right? So, and that's over, over a career. If they're doing it over five years, that's five years. So in tech, if you got your own business or in a high paying role, you can make that. So let's let's speak that fact too, right? So um, sorry, y'all. I got got to preach a moment. <laughs> um, you know, you know how I go. But uh, <laughs> Jerry, uh, how can we address the shared goal of closing the gender um, and pay gap? Um, honestly, I think it's all about you know holding companies accountable for their inclusion and diversity. I know when I was interviewing, that was a question I wasn't scared to ask. Um, I honestly said, you know, like. How is diversity shown inside of your company? And they mentioned, you know, the different ways that they have because I want to make sure that this is a safe space for me. I want to make sure that this is a space where I can grow and it's going to set me up for success. Um, and honestly, if you know the company didn't have those same values that I did, then I probably wouldn't have taken it. Um, in addition to that, you know, showing that 
work-life balance can happen for women. Um, you know, making sure that the work has, you know, different type of arrangements and offers flexibility. And honestly, with tech and especially working remote, that's definitely something that can happen. And then lastly, I think just to ping off of you, what the other women were saying, you know, about starting young, if your child is on their tablet all day, if your child is on that phone all day, mm. put some technology games on there. Put on, you know, some science, you know, Bill Nye's science guy. Where he at? Put that on the screen. <laughs> Honestly, like, you know, start making their things that they see at a young age something that they can inspire to be, you know, and have those conversations with them. Because I know for a fact, being a millennial, I was coding my MySpace page. I was breaking into my BlackBerry and set, changing the settings and things. Like, and those were those were things an engineer does that I had no idea engineers did. Like, so it's all about exposing those those things and those qualities to your kids and also the people around you as well. Yo, that listen, <laughs> you said all the kids that got tablets and phones in their hands. That means every last one of our children are gonna be engineers. Because yep. these, <laughs> my son, my daughters, they stuck to their phone all day. And really, they could be engineers. And code, code in the MySpace, you took it back because yeah. you had to change the backgrounds. With the words dropping down. Oh, it's it's so high. Don't play with me. <laughs> Who's like, well, putting the HTML code in there? Not really yes. on web development. Or not yep. really, we was doing things engineers would do. That is crazy, right? And maybe you that's watching this are doing things like that right now and it hasn't clicked that's like oh that's what engineers in tech do so now it's clicked for you the question for you is what are you going to do about it right are you going to take this to the next level and figure out how you can work in an industry that has unlimited opp uh, opportunities for you whether being a uh uh, 10, 1099, whether being a W-2 or whether being an entrepreneur, it's unlimited opportunities in this industry that tech is essential for the world, right? Without tech, without a company using some type of technology, in most cases, cloud computing, they would not have a network. They would not have a business. They would not be able to get money. They would be not able to receive money or offer you a product or service. So think about that, okay? So, Last question of the day for you ladies. All right. So tech is a field that can be quite demanding and and have many long hour days. And I want to get y'all in trouble. I want we want to talk about this stuff. Can you talk a little bit about how you manage to maintain a work life balance amongst it all? And that goes to you, Jen. Sorry. All right. <laughs> so how do we maintain work life balance? Well, I tend to think of it not so much as about work life balance as it is about being my whole self no matter where I am. And what I mean by that is when I'm at work, yeah, I'm focused on work and I'm doing the job, but I'm still me, right? The people that see me at work see the same me that the people that see me at home or out doing social things or whatever see, I'm no different. And for me, that's a big part of it. Anytime I'm working and bringing my whole self to the picture, it becomes less about work and more about just doing something that I love doing. And, you know, the same thing applies when I'm home with my kids and my husband and I'm focused on my kids and my husband, I'm being me. I'm living in that opportunity, living in that moment and loving what I'm doing there. And it's not work. It's family time. It's fun, you know. And same thing again when I go out and I'm social, if I'm going to a concert or if I'm, you know, hanging out with friends or whatever. Again, I'm still me. I'm just doing what I do. The key thing is the focus, right? What are you focused on at any given point in time? And are you deliberately choosing what you're focusing on? Work could take up your entire life. Your home and family could take up your entire life. Your social activities could take up your entire life. But the trick is figuring out how much of your focus you want to give to each of them and then staying true to that priority set. Mm, so listen, it's all about really what you want. Right. It's never, you know what? I'm just going to say it. Yeah, I keep trying to hold back to it. I'm just going to say it. it ain't about what these companies want out here. It's about what you want out of your life because you, it, and it's an equal uh, exchange. Right. But however, a company is going to work you as much as you're going to let it work you. 
So it's all about taking that time for you and understanding like, what do I really want out of my life and how much do I want to give up to a, a company, especially if maybe some of y'all underpaid, right? So really, what is your time really worth? Is it more valuable than what you're getting paid? Then you need to do an assessment of yourself and really take that time out to figure out your next move, but also take time to yourself because mental health is real and mental, spiritual, emotional, and physical health is real, right? So this can hit you four different ways and you don't even know it because you're not taking time for that, you know, for yourself to become whole. All right. So uh, Janita, how do you maintain a work-life balance in tech? Well, for me, um, working long hours, um, I get that. The demanding workloads, I understand it. Working in tech, it can also be, you know, high stress. It, it's, I feel like that's one, a few transferable, like, things that come from transitioning from healthcare to um, the tech industry. But for me, how I plan on maintaining it um, is setting boundaries for myself, um, having specific work hours and knowing like, where's my limit? And if I just so happen, if I can't take that time to myself, if I need to stay over for work or whatever, you know, I just tell myself, it's okay you know, go hard as, you know, pretty much go as hard as you can throughout the day. And then also um, prioritize self-care. Um, mm -hmm. To me, self-care is everything. It's mm -hmm. what balances me to take time out at once a month to get massages, to go to hot yoga, to, you know, just have, go to happy hour. All the things that make me happy. I've even booked a day trip to New York. I brought my mom with me. I said, girl, let's just go eat. Like I literally just need some time just to do nothing and just do stuff that's fun and enjoyable. So utilizing your time off, take those breaks for yourself and really just know like in the back, that's in the back of your head, you're going to need a break. Always prioritize your, your work, your workload. But at the same time, you have to put yourself um, just as high as you think about what's paying you. Because at the end of the day, that's, you know, that's what you're pouring out to others. If you're not okay 100%, then, you know, you're not, that's not going to transpire onto other people as you're, you know, as you being okay. And also, you know, seek support and tell your employer if you need a break or if it's just not working out for you, maybe try situating yourself into another department or getting on another project and, you know, go hard the next time as soon as something else comes up. But always try to put yourself put yourself first after work and um, before work. So when you walk into the door, you have no excuses. You can, you know, you can do whatever you need to accomplish at work. Yep. I definitely agree too, because you are the best investment um, out here. So if you're not uh, right for work, right, if you got stress levels that's through the roof and you can't come prepared for work and you can't do the job, you're not going to be able to make any money and you're not going to be able to, you know, take those day trips to New York just to eat. Put the money bags in the in the comments right now. If you take a day trips to New York just to eat, <laughs> tell, tell them right there, put the money bags in the comments. So, Spirit flights. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how do you maintain the work life balance in tech? Um, you know, I just feel like the word of the year is boundaries. And I want thousand percent wholeheartedly live by that like if i don't have the space because i'm overwhelmed i'm turning my phone off i'm you know taking that time to say you know what what do i need to recharge let me listen to my body let me reset my environment um if it's lunchtime i close my laptop and i turn off my phone and i put on the crown or put on something that i love because I need to step away for a second. That way I have a clear mind. That way that, you know, I'm not feeling overwhelmed and honestly having a routine. Every day I wake up, I do the same thing and start my day off fresh. You know, the only time I don't have my French toast is if I have meetings back to back to back in the daytime. And then even with that, you know, if I have a heavy meeting day, I try and look at the night before to see, okay, is tomorrow a heavy meeting day? Fine. Let me make sure that I set myself up for success. So I'm going to have, you know, 
my pillow set up behind me from the back. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that I stretch in between meetings, make sure that I change um, scenery because I don't want my eyes getting tired and I don't want, you know, myself to not be able to show up as my best self. Um, and honestly, finding, you know, that network of people that understand what you're going through. So finding that support system that you could just say, hey, you know what, today was a terrible day. Let me just talk to you about it over coffee. Fortunately, my sister lives across the street. So <laughs> if, I, if I'm missing that coworker, um, you know, uh, experience that I'm used to having, because now that I work remote, I just go to my sister's house like, you know what, what are you doing today? Let's just work together and coexist and have coffee. And then that honestly makes the day go by not only faster, but like I feel more refreshed. And then after that, you know, it's that. <laughs> that gotta be dope having your your best friend across the street and then y'all working you know what i'm saying look that's what it's all about it's all about you know taking care of yourself and then finding somebody to release and and talk to right because sometimes if you don't have that conversation to talk about your day those things can manifest into stress anxiety physical emotional spiritual uh you know health problems that you know you may find yourself with you know so trust i mean even i i experience some tension in these shoulders every now and then you know and <laughs> that means when I, these tensions and these traps come along i gotta tell myself hey you gotta go get a massage or you gotta you know start thinking about ways how can you be good to yourself today and treat right? yourself how can you mm -hmm. treat yourself so if you feel in that way just ask yourself how can I do something to treat myself or be good to myself today? Whether that's just taking a break and watching good TV on the couch, eating snacks, whatever you're going to do to get your mind off of that stress that the work is brand, you are number one. All right. So, and I know we come into the top of the hour and I just want to thank, uh, I want to just send a thank you to all the panelists, all of y'all ladies, the wonderful ladies that are here sharing the valuable insights and experience. However, however, <laughs> right. I want to make sure we acknowledge the one that's behind the scenes doing the work too. So I'm going to bring her to the screen. Everybody, I want y'all to see. She's in Australia. She is our community content strategist who always be behind the scenes doing all the banners, with the up close a person uh, shots of everybody that's talking. She the one that makes it happen. She want to put all these things together. Her and Shay Wright are other technical uh, content strategists as well. And those ladies are wonderful. I want to give a shout out to Shannon on our team, uh, Janelle on our team, you know, Madison on our team, Kelly on our team, Kel Kelsey on our team. I'm going to shout out to all the ladies on our team that, that make it happen for Level Up in Tech. All right, and I just want to, you know, make sure all of you ladies that's going through the program right now understand that changing the mindset is going to help you get to the next level, right? The tech is going to be frustrating at times, right? But the tech is, isn't is there to for you to change it. It's there to change you, right? Change the way you think. Change your habits. Change how you approach problems, Right? So a lot of us trying to change the environment that we're in, that we're working in to make things work for us. We should be just changing our thought process and how we approach it. All right. So I hope that was a gem for the day. All right. But I really appreciate you, uh, Mel. I really appreciate you, Jen, Jury, and Janita. Thank y'all ladies so much for coming on. Hey, if, if, do we got the banner for the Facebook group. If you're here, uh, the Facebook group, I think is coming up. Join our Facebook group, facebook.com, four slash groups, four slash level up in tech. Join the community of like-minded folks just like you. We still have the women in tech promo going on where the women are going to save huge discounts for joining our level up in tech program for April. We want to make sure this is the largest women cohort ever. Put the LUs in the chat right now if you want to learn more about it. Our team is going to get with you. I'm super excited. Listen, I'm trying to tell you your life right now. But until then, let's continue to level up in tech. My name is Broadus. I'm with these wonderful ladies, and we're out. Thank y'all so much. <laughs>